My name is Günter Fellinger. I'm an Austrian activist for European enlargement. And this is my main campaign. I'm now campaigning for Austria to join NATO. Also, this is very important because the answer to the war of Russia must be European unity in EU and NATO. I personally worked uh, in the 90s as a youth activist very much on the transformation of Russia in the Council of Europe at that time. So I was several times in Russia, but then I gave up on, on Russia in, when Putin came. And I'm focused now professionally on the reform of uh, Southeastern European countries and on Ukraine. And that will be also part of my presentation. First of all, I congratulate you for your initiative and for the Free Russia Forum. I saw it in uh, the Euromaidan press in uh, the summer, your, the report about your events. That's why I got uh, active now in the network. And I totally endorse your agenda. And it's absolutely what Europe should do, what America should do. We should actively de-recognize uh, the Russian Re uh, Federation. And of course, it's a terrorist feder uh, federation, as I call it here. And we should actively follow your agenda to uh, recognize uh, the 34 new states and to isolate Russia, obviously, and not to have a security seat anymore for Russia and all these important things which are very important. I will now outline a bit what needs to be done in order to make it work, especially when it comes to the economic framework and uh, what should the new states do and what we can learn from history and why it's important to study what happened in Central Europe in the end of the Austrian Empire and Yugoslavia. Because that's also my main focus at the moment, to help the countries which have developed out of uh, the ex-Yugoslavian states uh, into uh, European countries. And that's basically here the map of Austria and here of Yugoslavia. And uh, both of them have been broken up and uh, broke up after failed wars. And this is basically exactly the same model that also uh, the Russian Federation should be uh, broken up as a result of the war which they did against, uh, which they are doing against Ukraine. So the first ro historic role model is the Austrian dissolution after World War I. It's very important to learn from Mr. Masaryk, the Czech leader, because what he did, and that was really very important, he changed the American public opinion towards self-determination of Czechoslovakia. And this was really the decisive moment, because until the last moment, America was not for the dissolution of Austrian Empire. Until 1918, the Americans said, no, better keep together, and it's much better like that. But it was Mr. Masaryk who changed it, and that is really what we need to learn. Also, it's important to change the American political opinion towards uh, the breakup of uh, uh, the Russian Empire. And uh, do not copy, also from the Austrian case, do not copy what Italy and Yugoslavia did. So don't um, start some kind of mini federations again, but really like Yugoslavia, but really go fully for the independence of many small states. It's much better because it has led uh, to many, many uh, problems over the centuries. What was uh, the solution of Yugoslavia basically to form another federation of small states in the south of Austria. Good. Coming to America, and it's very important, I remind all of you that the Americans until the last moment have even opposed uh, the dissolution of the Soviet Union. I put Mr. Bush's uh, famous Chicken Kiev speech here and also his visit to Kiev here, while uh, the Ukrainians wanted independence, Mr. Chernobyl, the Americans were opposing it. And the same policy they had in Yugoslavia in 91 still, and it then has later changed. But we have to change the American consensus and to support unity of Russia. And that's not so easy. How to do it? The basic way is to say that we have an alternative. We have a better way. And the better way is obviously what happened in Yugoslavia, because we have now seven new better states. And this is the outcome. And it is really much better in the result to have new states which are free and they are working democracies. Of course, they are complicated in the history, but the appeasement of the Serbian elite to somehow say we should stay united, that's very wrong. And especially Austria played a huge role in the declaration of independence of Slovenia, of Croatia, of Bosnia, of Montenegro later and of Kosovo. And that was the good policy and we should repeat it in the case of uh, Russia. 
here comes uh, uh, what is important in the lessons for the demise. For I call it always X Russia. That's my hashtag. What is important? Prepare world opinion. A clear uh, agree on clear borders, but also, and that will be the main topic now, to learn regional cooperation. Because what is very important is that all the new states will be in a framework settled in an institutional framework which already exists, but which is very important uh, to make clear to the world opinion that this is the plan for the new states. They should be all in OSCD. They should be all in the Council of Europe. They should all aspire to have a EU free, a free trade agreement. They should also be partners of NATO. They should also join SEFTA, the Regional Cooperation uh, Council. They should aspire to join OECD. And some of them might also consider EU future, but all of them should more or less be in the customs and trading system of the European Union. And uh, that's a situation we have with Turkey or similar like Azerbaijan. And also, it must be clear that the EU from the beginning opens the Eastern Partnership of the European Union for all the new emerging states. Also to have currency stability back to the Euro and not to join any kind of Chinese world, but the free world and basically the European world. And you are very, very welcome. Concrete steps, because I want to be very concrete. First of all, what we need, we need all to support the victory of Ukraine because only the victory of Ukraine can set in motion the events which lead to the dissolution of Russia. So it is very important to have Ukraine fully in NATO, in the European Union, in the Euro as currency, in the Regional Cooperation Council and in the Central European Free Trade Agreement. Some of this has already happened, some things not. I advocate very clear that this is the next way forward. And all the new states and all the um, states uh, which are coming out of the Soviet Union, they should do the same. Join the Central European Free Trade Agreement, Regional Cooperation Council. Don't make any ex-Soviet inbreeding meetings. No new institutions where all these countries in the future, they sit among it themselves and talk in Russian. No to Russian as a communication language. It must be English as a communication tool. And all these ex-Soviet countries are ready to break with Russia, especially Armenia, Azerbaijan, and all of the countries to get a free trade agreement with the European Union. I'm also calling for the dissolution of the so-called GUAM. That's the network of Georgia, Ukraine, Moldova no, and Azerbaijan. No, <laughs> no Shanghai Cooperation Council. Leave the CSDO, leave the Eurasian Economic Union, And of course, Central Asia must be also in the Council of Europe. Russia is gone now. Central Asia should be in. And all the country's currencies must be backed uh, to the euro. Also Ukraine to adopt the euro. And also all countries to recognize Kosovo. This is very important because that's uh, one of the things all Western allies should do. Then I explain what we did in 2000 after basically the winning and deliberation of Kosovo. The West has established the stability pact for Southwestern Europe. That was the answer and a similar instrument needs now to be done for Ukraine and also then for the ex-Russian republics. And then it was very important to see that Ukraine was already involved in the stability pact from the beginning. But then was this um, rise of uh, Putin. And then Ukraine didn't join the institutions of the West. They didn't join the Central European Free Trade Agreement. That's very bad. And that must happen immediately. Also, Ukraine must join the Regional Cooperation Council. And that's basically the union of the um, countries of ex-Yugoslavia, Moldova, and should be Ukraine. And should be, of course, also Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and all the Central Asian countries and all the countries which are emerging out of Russia. Because we must show that we have the institutional framework to take the fear of the Western decision makers that there will be chaos and a crisis. And of course, it's not easy, but that's the way to do it. And we have established, and I put here uh, the uh, photo of Mr. Busek, exactly this association has been very, very successful in the last years and is very important to do it the same way. And I have also made here the list of the various organizations which are there for all new countries to join in this uh, so-called uh, sector um, reform. That means transport sector, energy union, 
that means anti-corruption, that means uh, finance cooperation. So all this framework which we built in the 2000s uh, to uh, help the um, southeastern European countries after the breakup of Yugoslavia, they are ready and they're working very well. We have very good results. And they are need now to, uh, to all the countries of um, like Ukraine and Georgia to join. And this framework of institutions is then ready <laughs> for uh, the new countries emerging out of Russia. That's very important that you have a regional network which is European and which works. So how can we now lead from the fall and breakup of Yugoslavia to and the end of um, Milosevic to the end of Putin? Here, of course, not all historic analogy is automatically true, but that's my theory, what I think we should all work together. Because how it worked, uh, first of all, Serbia was defeated, Milosevic was defeated in 99 in June, and then he had election uh, in 2000 in September. And because of the defeat, because of the imposed armistries of Kumanova, it was then the situation that uh, he had basically um, uh, to stuff all the ele electoral boxes very brutally, and the election was then so fake that basically this was the moment of the revolution of the 5th of October, where Milosevic was then toppled. And the same logic would be now. It must be a victory of Ukraine. It must be Western intervention. Uh, then, of course, uh, basically an armistice leading to a defeat or the perception of a defeat in Russia for 2024, when there's the next electoral meet, uh, term for Putin. And this he has then to fake so much that there is the moment of a revolution and a kind of 5th of October 2000 moment for the Russian Federation. And then we must have prepared the international public opinion that no kind of uh, unity of Russia will be accepted anymore. But one by one, all these three nations which you are representing must be then recognized by the Western powers immediately. And here, Montenegro was a lost nation. I have here the flag of Montenegro in my bag. And why? because Montenegro was already once a state for a short period from 1878 until it was then taken over by Serbia and merged in Yugoslavia in 1918. And it was lost for close to a century, but it's now a free country again. And it's now a NATO member and it will be very soon a EU member and it has the euro as a currency. This is a very important role model. And Croatia is free and so will be you. Kosovo is free and so will be you. And also Ukraine is uh, free and will win, and so will be you. The same what is uh, possible for Montenegro, Croatia, Kosovo, Ukraine is possible for all the 34 uh, nations emerging out of Russia. And here you have drawn the list and map of the 40 that you know much better than me, but I'm calling for exactly this scenario and freedom for all the nations of ex-Russia. Let me conclude also what I'm concretely today already uh, proposing, what we can do in this year, next year, in 2023. I'm supporting very much and advocating that Ukraine joins NATO, that Bosnia joins NATO, Austria, Kosovo, but we all much more united <laughs> as uh, the West and Europe in NATO. That would be meaningful because that's exactly why Russia claims to have started this war. They want to stop NATO enlargement. And our answer should be more NATO enlargement, security for Ukraine forever and for Kosovo and for Bosnia, for Austria and for the other countries as well in Europe. And this will be the decisive moment where Russia will be basically defeated, not only on the battlefield, but also institutionally, morally, and also by the show of Western unity by enlarging NATO. And this is what I'm advocating for. Yes, I have here my website links and also my YouTube page and all the other references for my work. And I'm looking very much forward for questions and I wish you all success. I know it's very difficult to fight for freedom in Russia because of the big risks all of you have uh, in your life with the security services. And I admire your courage and I support you as much as I can. And I endorse also the freedom for all nations of Russia to form their own way, same like Montenegro, like Croatia, like Ukraine, like Kosovo, freedom for the nations of Russia. Thanks a lot.
If you have any questions, Yes, thanks a lot for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm most happy. No, this is unfortunately a very new idea and it's a very complicated concept yeah? because in Western Europe and in America, as I have outlined in the presentation, you can be sure that most of the important Western politicians, the Americans, the French, the Germans, they will support uh, the Russian unity until the last moment because uh, the perception is that it is very dangerous. The Russians have nuclear weapons. They will be very, very, very complicated. And there is only a few people, I don't know anybody actually personally, who is ready to endorse uh, this agenda because it's a controversial thing to say. But it was also very controversial in 91 when Mr. Alois Mock, he was our foreign minister, he has endorsed the, in the, uh, the independence of Slovenia, of Bosnia, of Croatia, and everybody was against it and the Americans didn't like it and the Germans didn't like it. But he insisted, and in the same style, we have basically the moment comes, uh, you have to prepare uh, everybody on, for that, and we have to build a coalition, and we have to spread these ideas, and make sure that uh, the same role model, like in the ex-Yugoslavia, the independence of the nation was the correct policy, and it worked. 20 years later, we have good success, and this is the way to convince the European politicians. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, this is very important because why? Because you need to convince the world. <laughs> you need to communicate with the world in English. And I was also in my times when I was in Ukraine, I told, you know, all the politicians talk English, all people, NGO activists, you need at meetings to talk English, even when it's not perfect. For example, my English is also not perfect, but it's good enough to communicate internationally. And this is the way you show the world that you have understood. The world is basically an English speaking world. And then you use this and you get out of this cultural domination by the Russian elite. Absolutely. It's no problem to use Russian when it's more simple internally, but it must be always in English as well. It must be always tried to communicate as much as possible in English in order to make it accessible for the international support uh, or for your 
movement. And uh, the more you speak English among each other, it's also a learning experience uh, because I met a lot of uh, people in Ukraine, for example. They were wonderful advocates, for example, of the Crimean Tatar. I have here the Thai of the Crimean Tatars. I'm a real good friend. But they were, uh, they were only speaking then Russian uh, in international meetings because they were shy to speak English. Yeah? And, but then uh, most of the information, even in translation, is lost. <laughs> And even when you and you cannot build so much friendships in international meetings. So it's most important that if you don't speak English very now, you don't feel secure in the beginning because you come from Puratia or from Karelia and all your life you have spoken Russian mainly. And then you speak, of course, uh, the whatever languages you have from your ethnic background additionally. But you must have the fluency and the accuracy uh, to speak in meetings as well English. And then not go into Geneva or Austria or um, New York because many of you are internationally active, I'm sure. But I've seen it, for example. My very best friend is the Kosovo independence leader who was, the, like you, 20 years ago. He was traveling always uh, to Geneva and to America to make the case for Kosovo independence. And he was a very good English speaker. And he built a lot of friendships because he explained in very good English uh, the case Uh, for Kosovo freedom and now Kosovo is free and I see a lot of uh, the people from the also from Ukraine they come uh, with Russian or Ukrainian uh, to meetings hope for translations and but uh, they will never be so friendly accepted and it will never be such a good case so that's uh, really very important in your work in the promotion of the independence of the new nations of ex-Russia that you use English in international meetings and you will uh, present your case and it's not very difficult. Huh? It's very easy to learn and it uh, doesn't have to be perfect, but you should also train your, um, uh, your friends that they are comfortable uh, to make the case for independence of Puratia, Karelia, Komi and Siberia and uh, many uh, or, um, uh, whatever, Dagestan in English to the world in their video podcasts, in meetings. That's very important. Yes. Yes, you know, the problem is why the international community is against new states. Because they say economically small new states cannot work. <laughs> they say ah, small states will have no economic future and so it's a disaster and they will go in bankruptcy and then it's better not to recognize small states. <laughs> That will be the difficulties you face when you go for independence of Puratia or Karelia, Komi. <laughs> then they will say no, 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 that's not working. And it's very important to provide an economic framework which is working also for small states. And that's the European framework. And that's, for example, Montenegro. They have not gone for their own currency. They have gone immediately in the war. They have stopped the, the, the Hubel, the Dina, basically. Yeah, the, it was called Dina in Yugoslavia. And they have introduced the German mark as currency. And then they have immediately gone to the euro. And this is very important, that you have a currency which is international. You can use the dollar, but I'm advocating for the euro. But that's very really good. And that was what they did. Second thing is also they immediately adopted the European trade framework and the European regulatory framework. So not to invent their own state <laughs> economically, but to regionally, economically integrate into the existing European framework. That's my argument here. And when it when it comes to... Yeah, yeah. Let me answer the answer about the question of money laundering. I want to answer this. Because of the euro and because Montenegro is very beautiful, it was suddenly, and it was very poor 20 years ago, there was a huge inflow of all money from UK, from Arabia, from Russia. 
And of course, in the beginning, they didn't look very carefully and they allowed also a lot of Russian money into it, like uh, uh, gray money of some of your oligarchs. Uh, all the famous oligarchs of Russia, they have also bought some land in Montenegro. And they thought they can also have a lot of political influence with a lot of money. But what Montenegro proves, you cannot buy the country with uh, money. <laughs> Because Montenegro was very clear, they want to join NATO. And since 2017, they are in NATO. And then was a coup d'etat in 2016. Because Patrushev, uh, your secret service guy from Russia, the KGB guy, he intervened very heavily to stop Montenegro to join the, Euro, uh, the NATO in 2016. And he tried a coup d'etat. But uh, they were absolutely uh, able to stop that. And now Montenegro is NATO member only 11 years after the independence. <laughs> That's a very big thing. <laughs> It's a very fast process. And very soon Montenegro will be also in the European Union. And when you're in the European Union, all the laws apply from the European Union. So all this kind of uh, very problematic Russian money will be investigated. And the biggest case of Deripaska to buy, for example, the aluminium plant of Montenegro is already under operation and he has basically lost that plant. Yes, please. What's the, what's the question? Yes. Okay, I understand the question. I will explain it in English. Yeah? The situation is, the gentleman is asking me why the Western left-wing anti-colonial forces of the green and of the left yeah, are not more supportive of your movement of decolonizing Russia. There is two answers here. First of all, lack of information, because Russia is very powerful in information And they have basically, it was never understood as a colonial empire, Russia, by the Western. It was never explained like that. I know it, but it takes uh, some convincing and some information campaign to understand Russia as a colonial empire, which must be dismantled. So there is work on the information side. But secondly, Russia is very successful to buying parties in Germany and Austria. For example, the so-called uh, extreme right-wing party, the so-called AfD, and the extreme left-wing party, the Die Linke, and they are very much clearly funded and controlled by Russian interests. And the same is true in Austria with the so-called uh, nationalist party. And Russia is very, very active to fund political movements in Western Europe. And of course, uh, they say then uh, nice things about Russia because they get the money from there. And that's the uh, two problems, lack of information, but also massive Russian funding, which must be investigated by the in European authorities. And these parties who are getting Russian money must be basically blocked from the political process and investigated for high treason. Because Russia today is a hostile enemy state and it should not be allowed for anybody to work for Russia, uh, any European citizen or any political party indirectly to be subsidized from uh, the Russian Federation funding is of course a criminal offense and must be um, from the authorities investigated. Thanks a lot and for freedom of all your nations. Thanks a lot. All the best.